seal system. So what you're going to hear about nowadays, there are two types of systems and the first one is a water in water out method where your shower pan mortar um, back in the day would absorb water through the grout lines and through those grout lines the pan gets saturated. It's supposed to be a pre-slope to you know that quarter inch per foot to allow water to hit that pan liner, trickle down to the weep holes and then shed out. So as you take a shower, all that water goes in and then goes back out again. I have a different take on that. I've talked about it enough and I'm not gonna talk about the pre-slope, but that's kind of the water in, water out method that we did back in the day. Um, going forward, there are a lot of things that I guess I'm kind of ahead of the game on. I started doing blocking 22 years ago, blocking between the studs with two by six, because as I tore showers out, I never saw it. So I just felt like it was mm, not necessary, but it was, it was better to have blocking than not. So there's a lot of things that I've done on my own going forward that people are now adapting to. And I, when I say that, because the seal system, which everybody's doing now, makes the whole pre-slope notion of like it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant anymore. Why? Because water is never going to get into your pan mortar. So your pan mortar is basically there to, to function as a slope for the surface of your tile for the water to shed off into. That's all the pan is for. So if you want to do a foam pan and still have that same, you know, situation going on, then you're welcome to do it. But, you know, old habits die hard. So we're still, a lot of people are still doing mortar pans. But the mortar pan specifically, as I said, is only there to create a slope down to your drain for the water, the water surface, the surface of the water that's on your tile. That's what it's there for. So probably about seven, somewhere about seven or eight years ago, I started doing a seal of system because I just felt like it was better. Anything that I do to create a better shower, that's what I'm about. I started raising my wall board probably about that same time. About seven or eight years ago, I started raising my wall board, you know, by, well, we're looking at about three quarter to an inch right now, but by the time I put my tile in there, there's still gonna be a gap that's about a quarter to three eighths or so, so that the wall board never has an ability to wick up water. In addition to that, I'm putting my liquid topical membrane, and it doesn't matter, the liquid topical membrane happens to be Redgar, Aqua Defense, Hydro Band, A plus nine, there's a whole bunch of them out there. Um, Hitting the bottom of your wall board, no matter what it is with that brush, when you're brushing onto your pan is part and parcel to having that gap there. I don't want the wall board to ever wick up water because as wall board wicks up water, usually the curb corners are your Achilles heel. That's where showers fail generally. And they fail because, because the wicking action is hitting the wall board, going up into the curb and ruining the wood in here. And, or it's also due to this not being mitigated. This area right here is where water can get in and do the same exact thing. It starts rotting out your curb and or the adjoining studs that are next to it, both left and right. And that's when that's where we run into failures the most. So I take care of that by waterproofing the entirety of the shower. This shower right now is functional with no tile on it. So that's kind of the mantra that everybody's going on. That being said, there's also products out there now me doing what I did seven or eight years ago with creating on my own a sealed system. Now there's products to, I guess, help or advance that cause that I already kind of adapted to myself. So when I started doing this seven or eight years ago, and if you go back on my videos, and there's a lot of videos I have in, you know, like 13 year history being on YouTube, you know, you will see that I'm doing things differently, that I was only waterproofing maybe the perimeter outside about you know, five, six inches or so, and then I left the rest rest of it in there because I always so saw mold and mildew emanate through the grout line at the perimeter. So I wanted to discount that possibility ever happening, and that's why I did 
the waterproofing only in that area and still allowed water to get in there and get directed better down to the weep holes. Anyway, um, going forward, I thought, you know what, it's probably a better idea not to have water get into the pan to begin with, not to have any of the mortar saturated with water. That way there'll never be an issue. Part and parcel to that was not just waterproofing the surface. There are two coats on here. If you did three or four or five or eight, or it really doesn't matter. Two coats is sufficient. I've done enough experiments um, with Red Guard on cardboard boxes and sheetrock and all kinds of other stuff to know for a fact that this is 100% waterproof. But you have to be very, very conscious of the fact that your mortar bed has, you know, little little places where your brush really needs to get into. And if you read the directions, which I highly suggest that you don't on your waterproofer, um, it's going to tell you there's a certain mill thickness and you have to slather it on and yada, yada, yada. You can go to Isaac's video. He's done a bunch of videos where he's following directions and it fails. You know, either has little blisters on it or it cracks or whatever. I've never had Red Guard crack. I don't even, I don't even can't, I can't comprehend how that happens, but I only attribute it to reading the directions. So I don't. Um, with the roller, two coats on the wall, in all the corners, I use a brush on all the corners in here, including up under the wall board, and then the entirety of the pan, I use a brush. Once I have the brush, like before this caulking went on, I'm gonna get to that, before this caulking went on there, I brushed up against the edge of there, I taped it off and brushed up the edge as best as I could, as close as I could to that drain. Then, let that caulking dry, sorry, I put one coat on of the red guard, like I said, up to the edge of the drain. I let that dry and then I put in a bead of caulking, silicone, 100% silicone, white, so I can clearly see it. And I kind of push it in the best I can all the way around, let that dry. And then my second coat of red guard goes on the entirety and overlaps onto that caulking. That's how I created a sealed system seven, eight years ago. About four years ago or so, products started coming around. I think Flow Effects is the one that's getting pushed the most. And that basically has a collar. It's a proprietary drain with a collar attached to it. The problem I have with that is it calls for thin set to be your glue, not just with the drain, but with the collar itself, you know, where you overlap your sheet membrane over that collar and then thin set is used and thin set is not waterproof. So I have a big problem with that. If you're gonna do a seal system with a product like that, be sure that you have a little liquid topical membrane, no matter what it is, to overlap, right? So if you're gonna sheet membrane all the way up to that collar, then whatever that overlap happens to be, two inches or whatever, then do a little, little, yeah, Red Guard Aqua Defense Hydro Band or something around that. That way you're sure that no water gets in there because thin set is not waterproof. Waterproofer is waterproof. Anyway, all that to say, this flood test, this actual red guard was put on here yesterday, two coats. Um, and then I think by, that was about five or 6 p.m. And then about 11 p.m., 10.30, 11 p.m., um, my customer went ahead and poured a bucket of water in here with the plug that I furnished him. And um, it is now one o'clock, so it's been well over 12, 14 hours um, and there's no leak. We know that because the ceiling is cut out down below, so there's no leak. So the flood test is part and parcel. Um, you could do a flood test with, um, in fact, I highly suggest if you're a DIYer that you do the flood test first with just the pan liner. Then the secondary flood test would be this, right? So that way you know definitively that when you put your tile on here, tile is not your waterproofer, your waterproofer is your waterproofer. Okay, that way you know definitively. Now, when you do the flood test, a couple things to look for in the first five, 10, 15 minutes is little tiny, tiny, tiny bubbles. If you see any of that anywhere, you already know you have a failure. And then the flood test is a mood issue and then focus on that area where you missed and you got bubbles going up or whatever, focus on that. That being said, the 24 hour hmm, overnight type of thing is probably um, part peace of mind, but also because when I say peace of mind, if you're going to have a leak somewhere, the leak is going to definitively be below the surface. 
right? So you're not looking for a leak, you're looking for a failure of your waterproofer. When you do the secondary test, which I'm doing now, the failure of the waterproofer is here. The failure of your liner would be the one prior to this. So I hope I explained that well. I don't want this video to go on too long. Um, I don't like the plugs. It's got a wing nut and a couple of metal pieces sandwiched between some rubber and you screw that down with the wing nut. They're sold at Home Depot. Those plugs, I don't really like. I've never, never liked them. This is a balloon type. So I have a pump. Where's that pump at? It's just basically a bicycle pump, but it's just something I picked up at Walmart. Um, this is from a plumbing supply store. I don't know if there is a product name on here. Yeah, I think there's a product name. Um, but this is from a plumbing store and it has a little Schrader valve, same as air conditioner, or your tires on your car or whatever. And that's how you let loose of the air that's in there because you pump it up with the bicycle pump. And then once the flood test is done, now the water will evacuate and you can retrieve your plug. And there it is. And it's just a wonderful thing. I actually forget. I forget how much it costs. I think it was, um, oh, that's pretty cool. With a square drain. Um, I forget how much it was. If I'm not mistaken, it was about 30, $35, $38, something like that. That might have been 40 But this is a wonderful device that I carry in my truck at all times. Um, and it comes with that little release Schrader valve thingy. And so I keep that at all times. Anytime I'm doing a test on a shower pan, whether it's mine or if I'm doing a consultation, I bring it with me. On the square drain, it doesn't all go down, so I'm gonna have to shop back the rest of this water out of here. Another thing too, worth mentioning, you cannot have a solid material like Red Guard um, that, for lack of a better term, re-emulsifies and turns back to liquid. So Red Guard goes on pink and it dries red. And so anytime you get any of these waterproofers wet, it's gonna to go to its natural state. That happens with all the waterproofers that I'm aware of, and Red Guard is no exception. So even though it's pink, it is not going back to a liquid. It's impossible for that to happen. Um, so that's, that's that. That's all I can tell you. I don't know what else I can tell you. Like I said, you know, with me doing the seal system for the last seven or eight years, if you wanna go out and buy proprietary drains with flanges and all that stuff and make your own seal system, and you feel more confident, then by all means, um, people have asked me recently on videos, hey Bob, how come you don't like transition the seal system? I did, I did before the products came out. Well, how come you don't go and buy flow effects? Why? If you're confident in your, uh, your ability, well, that being said, yes, if you're a homeowner DIYer, then definitely go buy a product, but adhere to common sense, rational, logical thinking, critical thinking, if you will, and think like water. That's all you need to do. So when I talked about that, that collar that goes on those, those drains, make sure that you waterproof the over. I say that again and again, because it always scares me when I see a possible failure, that is a failure on that product. If you do it my way and you do, are you concise and you make sure that you're adamant about doing everything the way that I do things all the time, you're not going to have a failure. So yeah. Anyway, that's enough of my diatribe. I gotta get all this water out of here. Um, while I'm at it, while I'm mentioning this, um, the drains that Odie sells, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little screenshot over here. But the drains that Odie sells and Suit Chief and all those stuff, they have a screw that holds the drain cap on. And if you look at that closely, which I never did until now, if you look at those drains closely, where those screws, if you take those screws out and the drain cap off, they don't bottom out. Where those screw holes are at, they go through and through. So when you put one of those on here, on your shower pan, you're literally asking for those screws, the water to get past those screws and into your mortar pan. That's the Achilles heel. That is the problem with those type of drains. So now I'm transitioning to the ones that don't have any screws because I don't want my mortar pan to get any kind of water. And if I'm gonna use one of those, um, those drains, then I'm gonna put some caulking, some silicone inside of that hole, and then screw the drain cap down. 
because that's what I found out with those drains is the problem. But other than that, not much to say. I hope I help somebody. That's the whole purpose of my channel, helping people to understand some of the nuances of why things are the way they are, because there are some videos out there, yes, I talk a lot. There are some videos out there where they don't talk enough, and then sometimes people come on my videos and they're like, why do you talk to them so much? Get to the point. Everything is a point. I don't know what your knowledge is. I don't know who's watching. I don't know who needs to know something. And then I've got 50,000 questions in the comment section I have to answer, right? I would rather cover all bases to those people that are ignorant. And I don't mean it in a bad way that they're ignorant, that just don't know. Rather than, I don't know what you're looking for. I'm not going to make a three or four minute video and then miss information. Miss giving information. Anyway, I'm going to get to work, get this thing dried out because I'm ready to set this tile on this pan. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're going to call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.